Greetings once again. Yes, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know what time this is? Yes, it is. Church Media TT, the Know Your Bible broadcast on the YouTube channel. You have been subscribing and because you have done that, you're able now to go back and see the lessons that were there before. You're able to come at this time because you were notified. How were you notified? When you press that notification bell, you were notified that the Noah Bible broadcast is on again. So we are here together. All I'm asking of you is to help share the, these messages and, and invite people to be part of the Know Your Bible broadcast on Church Media TT, the YouTube channel. I pray that you had a wonderful week that has gone by. I pray that you're looking forward to greater things to come. And with God's guidance, blessings, and mercies, you'll be able to receive what he has in store for us according to his will and his purpose. Let's pray as we uh, continue to seek God's guidance into his ways. Father in heaven, we come before you in prayer. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your sovereignty. We know that you are the one true and living God and there is no other like you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being the one who continues to guide us and to help us through the study of your words. As we listen to the scripture that speaks to us from the context of Luke chapter 10, as we learn from the discourse between Martha, Mary, and Jesus, we pray that we will appreciate, Father, what is being said, what is being done. And we will find ourselves in a position having to want to learn to know and to be obedient rather than to be occupied and preoccupied with things in this world. Help us to make the right choices, that you'll be well pleased. And we pray that at the end of the day, that we will desire your salvation and be saved in accordance to your wonderful gospel. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. And amen. Yes, you have been with me on this journey of looking at Luke chapter number 10 from verse number 38 where it talks about Jesus came into the certain village which is the village of Bethany. He met Martha. He met Mary. He came into Martha's house. She being the mistress by her name meaning mistress and she being the one responsible for the home. They sat down both at Jesus' feet, both Martha and Mary. They were listening to his words. And all of a sudden, it dawned on Martha. Hey, I'm the mistress of this house. I'm the person responsible for Jesus being here as he came to the house. I must leave where he is and go into the kitchen, prepare something. And when I'm preparing something, I could be glancing and looking at how Mary is just sitting there at his feet, absorbing everything that Jesus is saying. And I'm sweating in the kitchen. I'm doing all this work. So she took a moment to leave the kitchen, come across and standing over Jesus because he would be sitting down where they were all sat and sitting down before and said, Lord, bid Mary, command, speak, say something to Mary that she will leave from your feet, listening to your words to come and help me in the kitchen. And of course, Jesus made it clear to Martha that you are anxious, you have a distracting care about everything else. Certainly, it's not to say that I don't appreciate what you are preparing or, or what your, hospita your hospitality. No, no, it's not that. But you have become distracted because you were sitting down at my feet. And then when this uneasiness came and she left, we realized that those are some of the decisions that we make in our lives that we are too easily distracted from listening to Jesus through his words, from listening to Jesus when you attend church services, from listening to Jesus when we personally open the Bible and we begin to 
to see what God has in store for us. We become easily distracted. Even when you have your Bible on your phone or your tablet or your laptop and you have the means by which you want to read, and sometimes you become easily distracted. And so what, what we're supposed to be strengthened by has now become our weakness. And so I hope that we are learning from this that there are certain decisions that ought to be made. Don't make the wrong choice as Martha did, but choose Jesus because he's the only one that can really keep our minds focused from the distracting elements of this world. So Jesus said, one thing is needful, and Mary had chosen that good part, verse 42, which shall not be taken away from her. Have you ever paid attention to that? First of all, the good part, and then he said, which shall not be taken away from her. Well, let's explore a little bit what is happening here. Mary made that choice on her own. She was not pressed by anything or anyone. She made the choice on her own to leave from Jesus' feet to go and prepare something in the kitchen. Her decision to listen to Jesus was based on the idea of giving support to the kindness and the favor or love bestowed upon her. Jesus and Martha and Mary, they have a good relationship. They have a good relationship. And see, once you have a good relationship, it augurs well for how you treat people and when people treat you a certain way. But secondly, Mary's choice was based upon an appointment or portion shared from her life with Christ. In other words, she would have been exposed to Jesus' teachings when he moved from village to village and city to city. So it's not a strange thing for Mary and Martha to come to know Jesus at this time because it was already there. That relationship was already there. That understanding of, of presenting the word of God and, and what truth is, is already there. There's always room in this tabernacle of ours, this vessel, this shell, this earthly body. There's always room for change. And Mary and Martha knows the value of that change by listening to Jesus. But somehow she became distracted. In all the various types of relationships we are seeking to establish or maintain among ourselves with our families, with our friends, our neighbors, and whosoever there may be, there should always be a portion of our lives set aside to share a relationship with Christ. In other words, nobody is not saying that you cannot be a son or a daughter to your mother or your father. You cannot be uh, a relative to your cousins, your nieces, whatsoever. You cannot be an associate to your boss, whether as an employer or an employee. Nobody's not saying that you cannot do those things, but sometimes the emphasis is placed on building external relationships with individuals and not building a relationship with Christ internally. So that's why if any man is in Christ, he's a new person. And that new person means I'm building a relationship that's supposed to be lasting long with Christ. So Mary has to go through the transition of realizing that the decision that she had made is one that she needed to, first of all, to reconsider. Thirdly, Mary chose, Mary chose the good part, which ensures salvation to those who choose it, because it is useful and beneficial for her present need and ours. Mary is demonstrating to us today that when you choose the good part, the end result will be in our favor. You know, Matthew 19 from verse 16, when we talk about this rich young ruler and Jesus, um, when he met Jesus, he said, you know what? Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Je Jesus said, why are you calling me good? There's none good but God. But if you have done these things, if you have kept these commandments, then fine, you know, eternal life. He said, all these things I've obeyed from my youth. What am I lacking? Well, Jesus said, well, sell what you have, give to the poor, you will have treasure in heaven, come and follow me. And he turned away because he had great possessions. He turned away because he was not willing to listen to what Jesus had to say and to follow his instructions. If you want eternal life, you have to set your mind on things that are above. If you want eternal life, you have to be obedient to the gospel. If you want eternal life, let your heart be focused on the things that are above, not on things on the earth. 
What did Mary choose? Mary chose to humble and to deny herself. That's what she chose. To humble and to deny. When she sat down at Jesus' feet, those are indications of humility. Those are indications that I'm willing to submit myself to somebody who is superior than I am and to listen to what he has to say. Jesus exercised humility even before his father. You know the Bible tells us that, and Paul made it quite clear in Philippians chapter number 2, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus from verse 5, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant that was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So therefore God had highly exalted him, because why? After death came the exaltation. He rose from the dead and he remained alive. So humility is the key when you want to come before Christ and when you want to listen to his words, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. The second thing that she did is that she listened. Humility allowed her to put herself as somebody who recognizes a superior over her and then she was willing to listen. She was willing to listen to the word of God. Hebrews chapter 1 Verse 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who we need to listen to is his Son. Matthew 17, 5. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Mary chose to listen to Jesus. She did not choose to cumber like her sister Martha. She did not make any excuses, but she listened to Jesus. And thirdly, by listening, you are able to put him first in all things. Luke, the 14th chapter, reminds us of the decision we will make, and for those who have already made, in putting Jesus in front of everything. Luke 14, verse number 25 there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, mother, wife, children, brethren, sister, yea, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. He did not make any excuses. No, anyone who comes to Christ, you come to Christ wholeheartedly, and you do so because you're willing to put Jesus Christ first. All the examples in scripture helps us to understand in Acts chapter number 2, when those who gathered together on the day of Pentecost and they heard the message, they obeyed the gospel of Christ. Acts 2.41, then they that gladly received his word were baptized on the same day. They were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Acts chapter number 8, Simon the sorcerer, as well as the Samaritans, as well as the Ethiopian eunuch, is seen in Acts chapter number 8, where obedience to the gospel was demonstrated because why? They put Christ first. Acts chapter 9, 22 and 26, those three chapters talks about the conversion of the apostle Paul who obeyed the Lord Jesus Christ because he was on the road to Damascus to destroy Christians but God stopped him in his tracks and therefore Jesus pointed salvation to him which he did obey and became a child of God. Acts chapter number 10, Cornelius, someone who did good deeds but his goodness was not enough. He needed to be saved. And God arranged for the Apostle Peter to meet Cornelius. And upon meeting Cornelius, he obeyed. What did he obey? The gospel. Because he listened in order for him to be saved. In Acts chapter 16, when Paul and Silas was in prison, they sang praises unto God. The jailer heard them. He was about to kill himself because anyone after the prison doors were opened were to escape, it would be on his life. So Paul said, hey, don't yourself no harm. Don't kill yourself at all. We are all here. And so when he brought in a light and he, he came before them and the Bible tells us that this same jailer, the same all of the night, midnight, when he heard the message, him and his household were saved because they listened to Jesus. Acts chapter 19, those who were baptized under the baptism of John from verse number 1, 
They were going about walking and thinking, everything is all right, we are saved. But yet, the scripture tells us when they met hmm, the Apostle Paul, have you been you know, saved since you received the Holy Ghost? Well, what do you mean? But let me, correct, let me correct that because I want us to get the exact discussion that he had with these men. And the exact discussion was, yes, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? And he said unto them, John's baptism. Then said Paul, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people, you should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, here's the point I'm making. When they heard the message, they listened to what Paul had to say, they were baptized. So how many people were baptized before? And now when you hear the gospel of truth, the word of your salvation, God is calling you to be immersed in water, to be plunged, that you can now be in the right frame of that spiritual life that you call us to live. So yes, it is possible for those who are baptized under the teaching of another and have not received the blessing of God because the blessing of God only comes through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Once you are called upon to obey the word of God, the gospel, it then means that you have to be baptized into Christ Jesus. So yes, some may have been baptized before under a different teaching, under a different guidance that doesn't bring the end result to be your salvation. Only what God says in his words will require you to be saved. So she humbled herself, she listened to Jesus, she put on Christ, or rather she put Jesus Christ first, indicating to us that that's how we need to also obey the word of God. Not everyone in our families might be saved at the end of all this because everyone has a choice. And that's a decision that must be made. Some people choose Jesus and some people choose to be occupied and preoccupied with everything else in life. So when you ask them, are you ready to obey the gospel of Christ? I'm not ready yet. Why? They are overly concerned or preoccupied with the affairs of this life, not willing to give their lives to Jesus. So as we bring a conclusion to the life of Martha, Mary, in their discourse with Jesus, I want us to understand that they have given us an example of how in this world many people will be occupied and preoccupied with the things of this world that does not allow them to exercise humility, to listen to Jesus, and to put Jesus first. And on the other hand with Mary, with the mindset that she has, open to listen to the word of God, and open to do things that will be towards Jesus Christ, the end result will mean that whatever God has promised will be granted to them. So let's learn from these two individuals that Mary had chosen the good part, that good part that allowed her to not only listen to Jesus, but being a benefit of what he had to say, which today for us would result in our salvation. So my encouragement to you as we close, do not be occupied, do not be overly concerned, do not be preoccupied with the affairs of this life, but with all humility, listen to Jesus, put him first, obey the gospel of Christ, that you can be saved. This is the message coming to you from Luke chapter 10. And this is what I would like all of us to consider as we go along our daily living in life. You heard the message, believe in Jesus. Repent of your sins. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Be baptized of your sins. Washed away. The Lord will add you to his church. And you will continue serving him in his kingdom. Stay safe. And stay blessed. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. What the Bible tells me. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he died on Calvary. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he came to set me free and be.
so I might live with him and make it glory. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. When the Bible tells me I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he died on Calvary. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe that he came to set the people free. So I might live with him.